Hi, this is John from 6-Bit. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a new Etsy listing. In our previous video, setting up 6-Bit for new Etsy users, we showed how to create a profile and import your items initially. If you haven't imported your items yet, you can always go up to Import and Import from Etsy to get to this point where your items are loaded into the Sell Items mode. Let's take a quick look around for you new users. 6-Bit has three main modes. That's sell items, check listings, and ship orders. In sell items mode, you'll enter all the information about your item. That'll be your inventory, your dimensions, the description, the pictures, everything about the items that you want to sell. Then you'll submit them and manage them from the check listings mode. In check listings, you'll see items that are running on any given site. This is where you'll be able to do revisions or updates to running listings. And finally, the ship orders mode is where you process all of your orders, all of your sales that come in. So in this video, we're going to be mostly concerned with sell items and check listings mode. In the sell items mode, you'll see all of the items you have ready to sell. Now these may look a little funny. These are actually just sample listings that we've created, so they're not really indicative of the kind of listing you'd find on Etsy, but you get the idea. So in sell items mode, you can look at your items in a couple of different ways. One, you can use the workflow that allows you to see any items that are under construction, items that you're currently working on and not ready to list yet, or items that are in a waiting upload. Those are items you've finished and you've placed into a waiting upload knowing that you're going to upload them soon, or items that are previously listed, items that are on the site already. You can also go into the repository, and from the repository, you can actually create your own folder system and organize your items into folders. And then finally there's the views. Views are really just saved searches. So in the views mode you can see things like available to list, low inventory, potential oversells, or if you save your own search um, that'll appear in this list as well. Let's go ahead and create a new Etsy item. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the Add button. This is going to bring me up a new empty window. So the first thing I want to point out is that there's a top section and a bottom section to the window. In the top section is where you're going to enter everything that's common to the item uh, across sites. So things like the picture, the weight, its inventory, those things are all going to stay common no matter what site you're listening to. In the bottom section, there will be a tab for each site that you list on, and that's where you'll enter the information that's specific to each site. Let's start by filling out the common information. So I'm going to list a wicker basket, and I'm going to go and add some pictures, or a picture. And you'll notice that we also have a picture editor. This is a nice little editor that has all of the common features you need for listing on e-commerce sites like resizing or rotating the images, cropping. Uh, you can even draw text or arrows, things like that on your picture. Then we'll go ahead and enter any identifiers. These are unique identifiers for the item that might be something like a SKU or a product ID or some sort of external item ID that you're tracking. Uh, there's a place for notes and also there's a place for recording your inventory. Um, that includes information like your cost and your supplier and where you store it. Um, you can go onto the specs and enter the weight and dimensions. And on the organization tab, this is where we'll enter things like the origin, where you're shipping the item from, uh, the folder that it's located in, and the status that it's in. And finally, if you'd created any custom fields, they'll appear here. Custom fields allow you to customize the 6-bit to store the information you want for an item. Now let's go take a look at the Etsy fields that we'll be entering. Uh, so first is title, and if we leave this tag in here, product title, it'll use whatever we put up in the product title here. Uh, we can also change that to something different if we want. Then we'll add a description. and follow that up by adding the category. So this will be home and living, home decor, baskets and bowls. Then if you have shop sections, you can choose a shop section. 
and into the product tab is where you'll enter the price, the quantity that you want to list, who made it, what it is, it's a finished product, uh, when it was made, it was made recently, and then even if you want to set the featured rank, you can do that, and whether it's customizable or non-taxable. Then much like on the Etsy site, you'll be able you'll be able to enter your tags like brown small and materials wicker and then any search info and this is things like the occasion that it might be for a uh, couple of different styles or the intended recipient so once you have all of this entered you're gonna go and check item to make sure that it's gonna be a valid item Oh, and I see I forgot the shipping template. So that's on the shipping tab. This is where all of your predefined templates will be shown uh, from Etsy, and you choose one of your shipping templates, and then check the item, and now it's ready for submission. One more thing I wanted to show you before we exit the item window is that if you're an eBay seller who now wants to get into Etsy, so you have a whole library of eBay listings and you want to convert them um, to be able to list on Etsy, you can use the Populate From button to populate this data from eBay. And what that'll do is that'll go out and get it, the description and pull that in from eBay and a few other fields like the, the price. Um, so that helps uh, minimize the time it's going to take to create a new Etsy item by using the item or by using the information you've already added for eBay. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and save and exit. And now we'll go back to workflow and you'll see that the item is under construction. Now as we continue to make more items, we can either do it the way we just did it by creating a new empty item or we can go to an existing item and duplicate it to use that as a, a starting point or if we want we can um, go to an item and save it as a template we'll call this wicker item and now from now on there will be an item template called wicker item that you could always use to create a new empty wicker item. <clears throat> so now we've created our item and the next step is to go ahead and, and submit it. So I'm going to choose my original wicker basket and click the submit button. Uh, the first thing we'll have to do is choose the site we want to list it on, eBay or Etsy. In this case I have eBay and Etsy turned on on this database. And then you'll notice there's a scheduled listings option. Um, what this does is if you want to schedule a listing for a later time, you can set the time and date and then 6-bit will, um, if your computer is running, 6-bit will wait in the background and then submit the listing when the scheduled time comes around. Or if you don't want to, you can just uncheck that and submit it immediately, which is what I'm going to do now. It'll tell me the fees I'm going to incur and then it'll go ahead and submit the listing. So when we're all finished, we can go and look at the check listings mode. And we'll see our wicker basket listed. I can click on the site ID to see the item on Etsy. Once an Etsy item is listed, it will stay running until you either manually make it inactive or it expires. If it runs out of inventory, it still is considered a running listing, it will just move into the out of stock folder. And if you want to start the listing back up again, you would have to go to the item, re-add the inventory, and then revise the listing to let Etsy know that you have more inventory and then it will begin showing up on Etsy again. Another option you have is that you can go to the item. And if you have the Enterprise Edition or above, you'll have the Allocation Plan feature. And with the Allocation Plan feature, you can set it up to automatically keep all of your inventory listed on Etsy. So when you change your inventories with an Allocation Plan, Etsy will automatically get a notification that you have more and it will start appearing on, on Etsy again. Any listings that you did physically change to inactive would have gone into the Completed folder and they can be restarted simply by selecting them and clicking the relist button.
That'll move them back into the running status. This concludes our video. Make sure you check out the next video in the series, Managing Sales with 6-Bit, which talks about how to process your orders once orders start coming in. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at 6bitsoftware.com. Thanks.